السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة الصلاة حيا للفلاح الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وعزيزنا وكريمنا ورحيمنا ونبينا وسندنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأنصاره وأزواجه وعلينا معهم أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى عز وجل في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين Respected scholars Honorable elders, beloved brothers and sisters, there is no doubt that we look into the lives of people, especially those of the Salaf, those of the past, and see their righteous behavior and their actions, and we focus on their accomplishments and we focus on the apex of their life, the zenith of their life, and we draw and we try to draw spirituality, we try to extrapolate some sort of inspiration and motivation so that we can better excel into our lo- in, from our own lives. However, seldom do we speak on the demises of people and the passing away of people. For your life, for the most part, you have the opportunity and the ability to decide and discern. However, when death clenches onto you and grips onto you, then at that moment, you are at a point that you have never been prepared before. 
And at that moment, it is your last moments, it is your last seconds on earth. And to reflect on what imprint you leave behind is truly remarkable in some people's lives. And today I don't have time to go into all the great deaths that have gone by, but I just want to reflect on one man and one man who I'm sure that every one of our ears are very familiar to hear and they know of. And for those that are listening that are not familiar with these names, I do hope that they go and they research and they learn and they familiarize themselves with this name for truly a remarkable individual. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a remarkable person by all standards. There's no doubt about it. What he accomplished in his life in a span of 12 years conquered 2.2 2 million, 2 .2 million square miles more than Alexander the Great. The influences he left behind and he left be, beyond himself till today they resonate as considered as Muslim countries those ni neither Syria, neither Iraq, neither Egypt, neither Jordan, neither that whole area was considered Arab in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But once Umar radiallahu anhu conquers those lands and he expands the Muslim influence, it was appreciated and it was grasped wholeheartedly. I mention uh, very often that I once was uh, at the border of, of Jordan and I was, I was exiting, I was asked about my last name, Khan, and I mentioned that I'm, I'm Muslim and to that there was a rebuttal at the border telling me that, well, aren't Muslims such terrible people and don't they spread Islam by the sword? And then I asked the person that was sitting in front of me, I said, or stand, I believe they were sitting, uh, do you know who Umar bin al-Khattab is? And this was a person who was of a non-Muslim background. And the lady said, yes, I know who Umar is. And I said, you, are you familiar with the story of Umar and how Umar came and conquered Palestine and Jerusalem? And she said, yes. And I said, let me reiterate the story to you, for I have seen the very place that you have may, may have heard of, and you may have seen it as well, but I have seen the very place where the story occurred, that when Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu came inside, and as I was walking through Jerusalem, I saw the very area with my own eyes, the Holy Church of Sepulchre, one of the holiest places in Christendom. And across it, there's a masjid called Masjid Umar bin al-Khattab, and I stood there and I, and I knew the story because I had read it in Imam Waqidi's Fatuh al-Sham, the conquest of Syria, but I wanted to hear it again and I heard it from the locals and then I went inside the Holy Church of Sepulchre and I asked them the question, the, the head priest there, I asked them, the Greek priest, I asked them myself, can you tell me the story? And they reiterated word for word the same story I'm about to say to you. That why is there a Masjid Umar bin al-Khattab right across the Holy Church of Sepulchre? And the story goes that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it's a long extensive story and I have a lot to say today. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu gets to Quds and when it was being peacefully handed over to them, and the Jewish people who were exiled for decades or centuries well before that, they were allowed to come back in and say, Umar radiallahu anhu had his famous mandate. The time of Dhuhr Salah came and it was the Muslims of that time and they understood and they recognized the importance of Hayya al falah Hayya al falah They understood it. They understood and they grasped it and they materialized it inside their own lives and they incorporated it. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, look, the dealings are going on, the negotiations are going on, the treaty is going on, but I need to pray my prayer pray my salah. So the person said to them, the, the priest said to them, that come inside our church, we would be honored, come and pray over here. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, Jazakallah khair, I appreciate the sentiment, but I will pray outside. And the person said, well, is there something wrong with our church? We are, we're trying to be hospitable and gracious. And this incident happened two places, once in Jerusalem, once, once in Bethlehem. And he says that, I fear that if I pray salah over here, if I pray prayer over here, the Muslims will regard this as a holy site because Umar prayed over here. And I fear for the safety of your church. And I fear that they may break your church down and convert it into a masjid. And therefore I'm praying across the street and lo and behold that masjid is called Masjid Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and alhamdulillah I had an opportunity to pray in there. So the legacy and the accolades of the individual are remarkable and many. But his last moments on this earth are truly mind-blowing. His last few hours or few days on earth are truly mind-blowing. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu leads Fajr Salah and for those who know the Fajr of Umar, he would recite the surahs like Surah Yusuf or Surah Nahl, very long surahs. MashaAllah, if the Imam recites more than one or two minutes, they say, oh, Imam Saab got excited with the mic today. Imam Saab got excited with the mic today. 
Sayyidina Umar radiallahu would begin in Ghalas when the Fajr time would begin and he would end in Isfar when the sun is about to rise towards about an hour long Fajr, 45 minute long Fajr. So one day he's reading Surah, Al- Surah Yusuf and a person comes from behind and he stabs him. And as he stabs him, Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, before he falls down, he grabs Abdurrahman bin Auf. In, the, in prayer, you're the imam. You get stabbed. And he grabs Abdurrahman bin Auf, puts him forward. Finish the salah. And the rawi, Amr ibn Maymun, says that we didn't know what was going on. We just heard, نَحْنُ فَقَدَنَا صَوْتَ Umar ibn al-Khattab. We just heard that the voice changed. We didn't really realize what's going on as much as the Nabawis in the era of Sahaba where the Fajr and Jum'ah was the same. And then the person who stabbed him, he goes into the crowd, he attacks 13 more people, six of whom die, and then one person from his, he throws a, uh, a, a cloth over him, grabs him, the man kills himself after the Salah. And this is just a remarkable point itself that how the Salah continued. I had a, a, an imam, I won't mention who the person was, we were praying Salah one day and uh, reciting Salah and I was young in those days so I would close my eyes and I would just be in, in, in tune and I hear again that the Imam's recitation finished. We were at a home and uh, one, you know, 20 seconds went by, 30, a minute, two minutes. I open my eyes and I see that the Imam is gone. And after Salah, we broke our Salah. Where did the Imam go? They said, oh, the, the Imam is scared of cats. And our cat came out. So the Imam broke his Salah and ran away. He said, forget this. Wallahi, true story. So anyway, Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, and, and, and forget about something as extreme. My text message comes in my pocket. My phone vibrates. Or I hear the Snapchat. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, who's snapping me right now? And my mind is going to the, my phone and my, it, just, it has just hijacked it. Allah says, don't come and pray salah while you are drunk. We are no longer drunk with the alcohol, we're drunk with the dunya. When we pray salah, we have no idea what's going on because we're drunk with our dunya. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu is pulled in. He's brought forward. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu inquires about how he's been attacked and why he's been attacked. And afterwards he goes and he asks, he says, okay, bring me, and everyone starts bringing their condolences to him. Because now they first attempted to give him nabid. Nabid is his drink. The Prophet ﷺ loved it. It's water, it's date soaked in water. You leave it for either 12 hours or 24 hours, depending on the season. And if you leave it for too long, it becomes alcohol. But they let it ferment for a little while, and then they, 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 they mush it up and they drink it. It's actually really, really good. So they brought Nabith to him because it's, li- it's in a liquid state. It has dates in it and it, it has power and strength and that was their diet. But when they put the Nabith in his mouth, it came right out of his stomach. So they said, okay, Nabith isn't going to work. Let's try with milk. Because milk, though it is in its, it's as liquid as it can get, but it holds a level of nutrition in it. So they gave him some milk and the milk too exited his, his system. And at that moment, they realized that this man is not going to survive. We realized once the milk went through his stomach that this man's not going to make it. Then people started coming and giving their condolences. One after another, the elders came, the youngsters came. And then finally, one young man came. And the hadith says he was a, the, the narration says he was a young man, beautiful. But his pants were below his ankles and they were dragging. And he came to say to Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and he said, Abashir bi bushra rasulillah. Abashir bi bushra rasulillah. Laka suhbatu rasulillah. Wa laka qidamun fil islam. Wa qad wulita thumma addalta. He said, oh, congratulations, man. You are sad. You've lived a legacy. You've had a remarkable life. Laka suhbatu rasulillah. You had to share moments. No, nay. At over a decade, year after year after year, alongside with the best of men. You've seen the man himself, and not only that, you were his father-in-law, and you were with him at every angle. Like a suhbatun. وَقِدَمٌ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ The 40th person to become Muslim was Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu in the sixth year of the Prophet Wasallam's prophethood. Six years and only 40 people. And then he says, ثُمَّ وُلِّيْتَ then you were given responsibilities and you were given governance 
and you were given political power. But you were just. And there is, there, there's a notion where we, 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 com- we commonly characterize politics with, with there be injustice. But there is a true powerful nature of justice in the, elements of, in the element of politics. And the likes of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, and there's many examples throughout history that will show us and show us that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the right people, Umar ibn al-Abdul Aziz rahimahullah, when the right people come into power, then a year, two years is enough for them to change the course of history. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, two years. The man was only Khalifa for two years, then he passed away at the age of 40 years old, young man. But what did he do in two years? There wasn't a person to accept zakat. Or almost, he made it decimated. Every person lived well for the most part. Changed the whole nature while the treasury was being plummeted and people were abusing the use of wealth. Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, is sitting there and someone walks in and they tell him that, uh, can you, or this is actually the story of Umar bin al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. Someone walks in and tells Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab that here, take this ithar and distribute it. It's a, it's a scent, it's a perfume. It's, it's made of oils. Distribute it amongst the Muslims. It's very expensive. But please measure it out so everyone gets a, gets a, gets a correct amount. They said, okay, fine, who will measure it? They said, just ask your wife to measure it. She's right there. He said, no, my wife won't measure it. They said, why? She doesn't know how to count. And I said, no, she knows how to count. She can count very well. But the thing is that if she holds the bottle, then she will take a little bit of extra because it has touched her hand by accident. And I fear that in the lot of Umar bin al-Khattab, more would come. And I fear that we would give, be given more than the mass public and therefore I can't accept this. Let someone else measure it out. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, the fourth khalifa sitting down, a person walks in. As soon as they walk in, he asks the person, why are you talking to me? Is it the, is it the nature of uh, a political business or is this something that just, we're just here to chill? Shaykh, it's the night, we're just, we're just here to come and hang out. And he says, okay, he blows out the candle. He said, you know, you only turn off the lights when you want someone to leave. I just came in and you turn off the light. He said, this candle, this candle is, it was supplied by the money of the community. This was supplied for the benefit of the community, not for you and I just to talk. And how many of us are at work and what do we do? Well, we are getting paid for something, we are doing something else. And this is a reality that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make one and all understand. So Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes on and then he says to his son, uh, Abdullah bin Umar, he says, I have a lot of debts, go clear my debts. And I have this much, and there's a long story on there. But I want to conclude because there's a certain point that I want to extrapolate from all of this. He tells Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, his son. He says, Abdullah, go to the house of Aisha. Aisha is the wife of the Prophet sallallahu In her house, the Prophet passed away. Therefore, he was buried in the house. And the house is adjacent to Majd al-Nabawi. And when her father passed away, he too was buried next to the Prophet sallallahu So where the Prophet's shoulder is, is the head of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, a little lower. And Aisha radiallahu anha, that was her home, she decided that when she would pass away one day, she would also be buried next to her father and her husband. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab, Abdullah bin Umar says, he tells his son Abdullah bin Umar, he says, اِذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ أُمِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَقُلْ لَهَا إِنَّ عُمَرَ بْنَ الْخَطَّابِ وَلَا تَقُلْ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَإِنَّ الْيَوْمِ لَسْتُ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَمِيرًا He says, go to your mother Aisha. And tell her that Umar bin al-Khattab is saying, and don't say Amir al-Mu'mineen, leader of the believers. Don't call me that. Why? It's because today I'm incapable to forego my responsibilities. I'm in- incapable to do my responsibilities. And therefore I'm ineligible to be your leader. Because I'm incapacitated and I'm injured and I'm on my bed and I'm about to die. So today I no longer am your leader because I can't carry out the responsibility. Well, don't even give me the title of it. Honorary this, honorary that. No, 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 I don't want it. فَإِنِّي الْيَوْمِ لَسْتُ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَمِيرًا I'm, I'm not a leader. He goes to her and she's crying and he says, the man is about to depart and he has one request of you. And the request is, can he get buried next to your father and your husband? And she says, وَاللَّهِ لَنْ أُوثِرَ عَلَى هَذَا أَحَدًا I, Wallahi, I kept this for myself. Nobody I'd give this to. But today I'll give it to him. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar comes back and as he is coming back, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as he approaches while injured, he told the people, no, 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 a message is coming. Put me proper. 
This I want to hear with respect. Despite the injury, fa'asna the nafs. He said, no, 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 help, help me up. Comes up, looks, and he says, what, what happened? And he says, abashir, you got what you wanted. And he said, do me a favor, my child. When I die, bring my body till the door and stop the body at the door. Emotions are high right now. Tensions are high. She's feeling it at this moment. Let it subsidize a little bit. And put my, door, put my body at the door and enter again. فَسَلْهَا مَرَّةً أُخْرَى Ask her once again. Does she really want to give it to me or not? Allahu Akbar. لا يحل ما لمري مسلم إلا بطيب نفسه رواه البيهقي. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it isn't permissible to take something from someone without their pleasure, without their happiness. You can't unjustly take something. Oh, that's that, that's a really nice shawl you have there. It's very nice, beautiful shawl. I have a, you know I have a shirt that matches just the shawl. Would you do you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you can take it. We have, oh, that, that, those dishes, they're wonderful, they're beautiful. They look so nice in my china set. Don't, don't guilt trip someone into giving something to you. Don't guilt trip someone into giving something to you. So he says that if she gives me permission, bury me there. If not, return me back to the regular graves in Jannat al Baqir. And as he's in his final moments, he calls six people. He says that I have, I'm setting a council of six people. And these six people will carry on the Khilafah. And one of them will carry on the Khilafah after me. He says, these are the six that remain from the ten that were promised Jannah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passed away. Sa'id bin Zayd was alive, but he was excluded because he was the cousin or he was the brother-in-law of Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. So he said, nobody from my family will move forward. My son Abdullah bin Umar, though he was one of the most senior and he had the most knowledge and fiqh, he said, he can't, you, can't, you can't elect him as the leader after me. It ends with me. Someone else. It's not on children. It's not that my children did it. My family did it. Our dynasty must exist for years and decades. No, 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 no. But if you are, have difficulties, then Abdullah will select it for you, who the Amir is. So he puts six people there. He puts Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, Uthman bin Affan, radiallahu anhu, Zubair bin al-Awwam, Talha bin Ubaidullah, radiallahu anhu, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, and Abdurrahman bin Auf. He says, you six decide who's going to be the next Khalifa. So this is the concept of voting. This is the concept of voting. The first one says, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas says, I give my vote to uh, 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 Zubair bin al-Awam radiallahu anhu says, I give my vote to Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. And Talha bin Ubaidullah says, I give my vote to Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas says, I give my vote to Abdurrahman bin Auf. And now it's Abdurrahman bin Auf, Ali radiallahu anhu, and Uthman radiallahu anhu. And the story is very, very long. Abdurrahman bin Auf radiallahu anhu, and I'm just going to condense it. He grabs both of them and he says, look, are you willing to take whoever is, you know, the, to take it appropriately and take it correctly and do it and execute it properly? And of course, both of them say, yes, we will do it and whatnot. So he goes around asking other people what their opinions are. And after a very long time, he comes back and he grabs Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu's hand and Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu's hand. And he says that, I, and he gives a whole long sentiment. Then he says, I put my hand in Bayah and I put my allegiance for Uthman radiallahu anhu. And he puts Ali radiallahu anhu's hand there as well. Because there was reasons for that. While Ali radiallahu anhu was married to one daughter, though she was the queen of Jannah, the princess of Jannah, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu's dhun nurain. He had two daughters in his, in his nikah. So two over one, it's, 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 it's common math. And that's why I say the Uthman had that uh, uh, superiority in that sense. But from this aspect, we understand one thing very important. The concept of our words and our actions and our votes. As you know, at this time and as you walked into the masjid, you noticed all the people that were standing there and all the, the election hype that's going on right now. One of the things that unfortunately we, are, we lack is in our voting ap uh, uh, capability. This is one of our greatest strengths and blessings as being an American citizen, to be able to vote. To have your voice make that change. As the Arabic saying goes, Al-sinatun nas aqlamul haq. The tongues of people, the speech of people, the words of people are the pens of truth. 
If you want to see an effective change and you want to bring about a change, man ra'a minkum al munkar, man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yugayir bi yadihi, fa illam yastati' fa bi lisanihi, fa illam yastati' fa bi qalbihi, fa dhalika adha'afu al iman. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you see something that you don't like that's going on, try to make a change with your hand. Bring about, go cast that vote, cast that moment, cast that ballot. Bring about that change. And if you can't, then okay, the next level is you're a keyboard warrior on Facebook. If not, then at least don't like the evil. Don't like what's happening that's bad. Remember one thing, the Prophet ﷺ said, Afdalul Jihad. Afdalul Jihad, the best jihad. We hear the word jihad and get scared. The best jihad. What did the Prophet ﷺ say is the best jihad? Kalimatu haqqin inda sultanin jahir. To say the truth. Kalimatu haqq. To say the truth. Inda. Inda in Arabic is used to show a level of proximity. Inda sultanin jahir. By a person who is a despot or a person who is a, a, a bad leader or a dictator or someone who has, uh, is, is, is evil in their ways. Kalimatu haq, to say something that is truthful, to say the right message to someone of that level. Now, let me, let me extrapolate this hadith furthermore for you. Inda shows that there has to be some sort of proximity. Your voice will only be taken seriously when you begin speaking. Because being silent is being complacent to whatever is happening. If you don't agree with what is happening and you want certain changes, it is your time to speak up. If your vote, if your words, and if your vote has a value, then your concerns will also be addressed. But if your words are not having a value, and, no, and everyone knows that regardless of what happens, you stay quiet and you stay silent, then guess what? No one cares what you have to say. Because you aren't saying anything. You are silent. We know in the U.S. our words are echoed through the voting system. Our words and our sentiments are echoed through the voting system. I was reading an article uh, yesterday or the day before that mentioned uh, a lot of political campaigns that focused on anti-Islam and Islamophobic rhetoric actually lost. It actually hurt their campaign more than help their campaign. I have lived in cities and visited cities where the whole political balance changed. I lived in South Africa for a few years, five years, where I saw Muslims at the highest level, and I saw the influences of Muslims, and I saw the, the peace that Muslims could exist with in, and the prosperity that they took of the goodness that they had in their own religion, and they distributed amongst to everyone else around them. To the point, that while I was there, there, were, there, were, there was a time of xenophobia where there was violence against any person who came from ab abroad. And our school housed students from 60 countries. And our school, though it was across a settlement of indigenous, we were never harmed. And one leader asked, we had one of the students who was a convert from the indigenous, we sent him there and we said, something happening, we have, we, we have security everywhere, the police are there, everyone is there, we're scared because there's so much violence taking place. And they said, yeah, we understand everything, but your institute is off, is off, uh, uh, it, 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 no one's going to touch it. It's, no one's allowed to even harm it or even look in that direction. They said, why? They said, well, a few months ago, our little village ran out of water, and you had four or five wells, and you gave water to us, and therefore we recognize this favor that you have done, and we will perpetually protect you and make sure that no harm comes to you because of your action. There is so much good in Islam. There is so much, so much good in here. And that those sentiments will only be expressed when you are able to take a voice and you're able to stand up. Uh, lastly, the question comes all the time. That, well, there are so many things that the such and such person, their views on that I don't agree with. And, you know, for many of you who know me, I'm a very, very strong a proponent and, and a person who, who expresses my, my deep pain for the Palestinian crisis. And everyone knows, for anyone who knows me for even a second, they know that that, that that issue is very deep in my heart. The issue of any individual, any person whose rights or who's, who are restricted in any capacity 
is something that pains my heart, whether it may be in Yemen or maybe in Burma or maybe in Kashmir or maybe in Iraq or maybe in any other part of the world in, in Central Africa, in the Uyghur Muslims in China. It doesn't matter where it is, but if we look at the political scale right now, the Muslims, you, you, can, you can point your finger at any part of the map and there will be some sort of Islamophobia in that area. And sometimes it's, it's Muslims against Muslims themselves in, those, in, in that aspect. But if you want that change, if your voice is recognized, then your voice on those issues will also be recognized. It doesn't mean that I agree with everything that person has to say. I can disagree with, the, with some of their sentiments, but my, my voice will only be heard if I'm in an area where my voice can be heard. But if I'm silent and I'm saying that, oh, I don't like this and that person, I'm never going to affect that change. So it's time that the Muslims stand up and it's time that as our community, there are millions and millions of Muslims in the United States of America, which is enough to change the political shift on any, at, at, at any uh, uh, front. It is enough for it. We look back in England, Mayor Sadiq Khan, a Muslim in London. You can go into London, there are probably more uh, tandoori chicken spots and like karai gosh spots than gas stations. I mean, it's... You can bring that effective change, but be part of society. Be a good citizen. Do your responsibilities. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'il al-Muslimin fa-astaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafuru al-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi alihi al-ajl al-wahid al-fard al-qadim al-awal Fa'anta maliku al-nasi rabban faqbal thumma al-salat ala al-nabiyy al-afwal Fa'inni awalan abada'u bi amrin qad bada Allah ta'ala bi nafsihi Thumma thanna malaikataha al-muqarrabin wa thalatha nabih Qala ba'd a'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammad bi adadi man salli وصام وصل على محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأصحاب ذوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وعلينا معهم اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أصل أحوال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم احفظ المسلمين اللهم احفظ دماء المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اللهم انصر المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولأزواجنا ولأولادنا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حقنا يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظ المسجد الأقصى اللهم احفظ المسجد الأقصى اللهم احفظ المسجد الأقصى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى استوى اعتدلوا فإن تسوية الصفوف من تمام الصلاة صد الخلل وتم الصف الأول في الأول please straighten the lines fill in the gaps and silence the phones الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I've made the salah quicker if the Prophet Sallallahu would make the salah quick when he would hear a, a child cry السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen, I just want to announce that Epic is planning a father and son fun day this Sunday. This Sunday from 12 to 8, it's going to be according to the weather, probably the last 80 degree Sunday of the year, Allahu Alam. So inshallah ta'ala, fathers and sons are, uh, want them to join inshallah ta'ala this beautiful adventure and bond with your sons. Uh, you have to go, please, and register at, uh, in, uh, on our Facebook page. Or if you got the email today, inshallah ta'ala, it's right here on Ascend Camp, uh, around 40 minutes away. They have hay rides, uh, archery, BB guns, mini golf, uh, all kinds of beautiful activities so we can bond with our children and have fun as, as a community. And inshallah ta'ala, the mother-daughter also is being planned, uh, inshallah, in the beginning of, of December. And if you don't have any sons and you would like to come, also you are more than welcome, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. 
Jazakallah khair for the beautiful timely khutbah. MashaAllah, Sheikh he was here. MashaAllah, it was very inspiring. Just to add to that, Alhamdulillah, as uh, the, the growing Muslim community, uh, I'm sure you're all aware of the election season that is happening right now. EPIC, Alhamdulillah, worked really hard. The outreach, sub, the, the outreach uh, civic engagement subcommittee worked really hard to invite the candidates and the candidates uh, from different offices, running for different offices, they took the time to come and meet with us. So the onus is on us now to go and meet with them, ask them the questions that you're concerned about, make yourself aware of the issues that really bother us, that really that wants to be fixed. So inshallah, they're standing outside. First of all, we'd like to thank all the candidates who are here, uh, taking the time to come and meet with us. So we really appreciate and thank them all. So next, if well, on your way out, please stop by, meet, greet with them, talk to them, express your concerns, get clarifications, etc. And most importantly, make sure you go out and vote. If, you're not, if you do not vote, then you lose the right to complain. So inshallah, I'm sure that we are now by this time, we are fully aware of the importance of the voting. So please go out. Now, in addition to this, another announcement is inshallah on October 30th. Uh, EPIC, in partnership with CARE, we're going to organize a program here after Isha. This is a program called Know Before You Go. So this is about all the different candidates that are running for different offices. So inshallah, we'll present to you what their stance are on various different issues, their views, their points of views, etc. This is just to bring an awareness amongst us to understand what offices and who, who the candidates are, what their stances are on different, uh, on different topics and issues, etc. So please mark your calendars. It's October 30th after Isha here at Apik, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.